this is just like a family. Probably you don't understand. Probably you will know maybe you finish your PhD. You understand what I mean, OK? I have thanked all of my friends here. I mean, the, in particular, I have to thank uh, Chris Murray. Where is this guy? I have to thank uh, Chris Murray in particular. He helped me a lot during my early career uh, of this nanocrystal business. You know, I get into this business like uh, about like uh, 16 or 17 years ago, right after I came back to Korea. All right, so you know, the, I really thank for Chris and uh, in particular, and also all of the like um, you know, Louis and Munji and all of you know David, all of you know the you know, you guys. I mean, help me. I really appreciate that. With that. And you know, when I prepared this talk and uh, I called my friend Benoit, hey, Benoit, as you know, my expertise is uh, iron oxide, right? I mean, I'm the, I'm the oxide guy, not the semiconducting oxide in some sense. And but, you know, this is a cute thought is, may I talk about the iron oxide as, as you usually did? Benoit said, no, you have to remember, this is the QD. All right, all right, let's think about it. What I have done for the, yeah, semiconductor nanocrystals. Yes, I did something. Let's talk about that. And then last minute, I changed. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So you know, for the last uh, 17 years or so in the Seoul National University, I've been working on the nanocrystals of uh, synthesis of you know, uniform-sized nanocrystals and uh, their applications. Okay? Basically, I'm a synthesis guy, as you can see. Look at me. I'm a synthesis <laughs> so, you know, the, so, you know, the, and also, you know, the, after making something, you know, I have to justify myself, you know, the getting a lot of money from my Korean government, right? So, you know, the, oh, yeah, there is some useful applications. That's why I have been working on some medical applications and also some more recently on the energy applications, such as, like, I mean, the, I just want to give, they're not, don't, don't be scared. This is not what I'm going to talk about, okay? So, but just, I, I just want to show most recent results what we have done. So, you know, the, as you know, this is kind of long, old paper, right? I mean, the nature materials, we can produce, you know, now we can produce kilogram quantity of this uniform size, iron oxide and a different kind of oxide and particles. And the last year in the science magazine, we reported that the, for the first time, we can do a galvanic replacement reaction to make a hollow this kind of you know, iron oxide starting from manganese, manganese oxide on a plate. And for the first time, oxide in the carbon replacement reaction in the oxide nanocrystals. And also like I'm using this kind of like a carbon iron oxide nanocomposite as a lithium battery anode applications. And also like I mean, made different size bismuth nanocrystals for the thermoelectric size dependent, you know, the thermoelectric actuation. And also like, uh, as uh, you know, Dr. Akimov just, I was, I didn't surprise that. I was, I was really surprised that the, he's talking about, in the end, he's talking about MRI contrast agent. That's my area. So, you know, the, and I was happy to see that uh, he tried to use the gadolinium oxide, not a particle for the MRI. Yeah, actually, I tried to make, uh, I, I used a small size iron oxide, not a particle, really small size, like a less than three nanometer size iron oxide, not a particle for the T1 MRI contrast agent. Actually, right now, I just finished working with, uh, almost finished working with the monkey model for this uh, iron oxide nanoparticle. I'm hopefully in the next meeting in the, not the semiconductor nanocrystal community, maybe see nanocrystal in general. I'm going to talk about this result, okay, later. And then also, like, I mean, the, we demonstrate the serial nanoparticle treat and prevent, you know, stroke, which is nasty uh, stuff. And also, like, I mean, the, we also made uh, some kind of weapon. Okay, weapon against uh, this nano grenade, but nano grenade, you know, fighting against the cancer. Okay, that's what he put it uh, just one month ago in Jax. And also, like, I mean, the, you know, two months ago in the Nature Nanotechnology, in collaboration with the Young Kim, actually we incorporate different kind of, you know, you know nanostructural materials into this uh, flexible and stretchable device. And, uh, and uh, not only diagnosis thing, I mean, the, uh, Parkinson's disease, also treating, treating, you know, that uh, that received a lot, a lot of like media attention, you know, the afterward. So, you know, as you know, size matters, right? In nano, actually, size matters. Oh, sorry, you cannot see that. You see this Android legacy, and this is a you know, the speaker, you know, the you know Yuri Vanin, and then this is uh, some guy, right? 
Yeah. Size matters, right? Size really matters. But in nano, not only size matters, but also shape matters too. As you can see, really matters, okay? As you know, I mean, the, this is like a paper by you know, Paul a long time ago. So as you can see, if you look at the density of state as a function of like a dimensions, actually, this is a continuum and uh, three-dimensional structures. But you know, when you, this is typical what you see, quantum dot, right? Zero-dimensional, you know, quantum dot structure is discrete, discrete, like a delta function, like a dense of states. When you goes down to the one-dimensional structure, not a rod, like this, and uh, as you know, this is the Q, I mean, 2D quantum confined structures. Now it becomes this kind of, you know, like, I mean, the, I mean, the, this kind of, you know, the so tooth like um, structures, right? And then when it goes down to the two dimensional structures, 1D quantum confined structures, you know, it becomes just a kind of staircase like, I mean, dense of states, right? This is what you expect. But the thing is, this is a kind of like, I mean, the, you know, obviously more of these first particles. This is a legendary paper by, I mean, the Munji and uh, Chris and, and David, you know, the, oh, this is, you know, this is really important paper, as you might know, right? Oh, anyway, so, you know, the, so, you know, the, and then later, actually, you know, the, I mean, Paul picked it up and uh, did the final tuning with uh, Xiaogang Feng and uh, can make this kind of highly uniform size, you know, CDSC nanocrystals. Okay, and this is a zero dimensional CDSC structures, as you know. I mean, obviously, I, I, I'm sorry, I mean, Luis, I mean, I'm just talking about uniform size, that, that kind of stuff, okay. Obviously, I mean, the previously, you know, the, in the, and the Paul and Munji was the Luis, I mean, that they did the, making the, uh, reverse mice derivative like synthesis to make uh, particles. But anyway, so you know, one dimensional structure. This is appeared in the first in the like Nature in the March issue it, by Paul's group, Paul Ivesaro's group. As you can see, they made uh, like a CDC nano rod. When I saw this paper appeared in the science, oh, my heart was broken. I was really devastated. Oh, shit. Uh, I'm not going to say S word, but you know, that's, uh, I was really, really disappointed because of this. It looks very similar, right? TM image is uh, awfully similar as this one. And fortunately, different material, right? This is CDS in ion. We have been working on the ion system, actually. And then for the first time, we made a magnetic ion oxide, ion run rod. Okay, starting from spheres and oriented attachment to get the nano rod. This, so you know, the I was about to write a paper, and I saw this paper came out of science. <sighs> but you know, the different material, and I submitted, you know, fortunately, was uh, published in JAX, right? <laughs> as you can see. So, you know, the, so you know, the, this is possible, but still, two-dimensional structures, okay? 2D structure has been known many years in the physics area, in particular using the thin film, like fabrication technology. As you can see, there's a different kind of sandwich structure like this. And that, that's a whole bunch of quantum wave structures have been uh, fabricated using the, that kind of like, I mean, the high vacuum, like a fa thin film fabrication method. And for the, a lot of applications, laser diode and the IR detectors and that kind of stuff, okay? There is a bunch of you know, important applications. But to make a freestanding quantum dot, okay? Colloidal quantum dot is extremely challenging. Why? Okay? I will show you why. This is actually, for example, CDSC, world size structure, okay? Actually, to make a nano plate quantum sized, instead of a nano rod, one dimensional structure, we have to utilize the small, tiny, tiny, tiny energy difference. And its difference between these two surfaces, which often, you know, the, as you know, I mean, the, often the quantum dot synthesis is conducting over 200 degrees Celsius, or maybe oftentimes more than 200, right? 300 degrees Celsius, very high temperature, right? At the high temperature, this small, tiny, nanoscale difference is nothing. It's just wiped out, right? That's why you often, for the world size structure in particular, you often end up with, again, one-dimensional structure, right? So, how are you going to utilize this uh, small difference? How are you going to differentiate this small energy difference? 
The answer is uh, you have to decrease the reaction temperature. But still, to make nanocrystals, we need nucleation, right? Right? To induce nucleation, that means the formation, the crystallization process should be highly reactive. How are you going to do it? We pick up the, you know, the most reactive system, which is acid-based reactions, basically. Lewis acid-based reactions. So we start with the CdCl2 Cl and working with this kind of like, a, you know, the, you know, selenium complex, okay? This is base and this is amine complex. Amine complex with the CdCl2, Lewis-based reactions. That's really reactive as my imagine. And we could conduct this reaction as low as 70 degrees Celsius. All right, low temperature, we could do it. And then, this is what he got. So, you know, the, as you can see, this is, a, you are looking at the, you know, the, this uh, like a stacked lamella structure, like, I mean, the CDS in nano ribbon. And thickness, as you look at here carefully, you know, this is a single nano, nano ribbon is a, just, a, you know, this kind of like, I mean, the, as you can see. And if you look at thickness, that's 1.4 nanometer, which is absolutely quantum confined. You know, the, so this is the first demonstration that the 2D, two-dimensional freestanding colloidal quantum nanostructure can be generated. And then even more exciting is the fluorescence. Okay? If you look at the photoluminescence, the wave, this in particular, it gives a blue light. Okay? And the uh, interesting thing is this uh, bandwidth. is actually, some case, is uh, after the HM is less than 10 nanometer, okay? Very, very narrow lines, okay? This is a very interesting characteristic, okay? It, which is actually comparable to the like, best QDs in terms of like, I mean, the line width, okay? And the later, actually, we also did a modify this uh, synthetic process uh, such as like this, you know, the basically, you know, the mixing octylamine with olatamine. Actually, we can decrease the interaction between the layers, okay? Starting like a CD, CL2 forms this kind of structure. It, it has been known. And by decreasing the interactions between these layers, actually, we could make a Something like, I mean, the exfoliated, uh, separated, uh, you know, single layered nanoplate structures. Okay, obviously quantum size. The same thickness didn't change if it's still 1.4 nanometer. So, you know, this is a basic stacked, okay? And also we can get the, you know, separated single nanoplate or nano, nano sheet like structures, okay? As, as you can, thickness is 1.4 nanometer and this width. And still, we try to get the larger dimensions for the different kind of application or like FET, for example, I mean, the, but the thing is, it's still very tough to make a larger dimension materials of a single, single nano, nano plate, okay? That was uh, still pretty challenging. And uh, when you took the you know, AFM images, we can see that the, the height is a two nanometer. So when you consider that the, although the core CDSC thickness is 1.4 nanometer, we, we still have like, I mean, the AF, AFM can see the organic layers too, right? So you know, the, when you consider the octylamine or olanamine the layers, this is pretty much right, okay? And then, you know, the hexagonal wall structure has been characterized using the HRTM image and also syn synchrotron XRD, okay? And actually, uh, my friend Roy Hoffman did uh, at Cornell University the calculation and turned out to be that uh, the one we are seeing here is actually seven atomic layers of this uh, CDSC layer. That's what you see here. That's what he did uh, through the DFT calculation. He could, uh, he could do that, okay? He showed that. All right. And again, you know, the, when go back to the PL, turn out to be PL does not change that much. You know, the, although there is, I mean, slightly, like, I mean, you know, the slide might be a little bit narrower, but still very similar, like, I mean, the PL patterns here. And as you see later, I mean, interesting, you know, all of these kind of 2D, two-dimensional, like, a CDSC structures, like, quantum confined structure, exhibit the very narrow, like, I mean, the photoluminescence patterns, which I will show you later, okay? And we can make grams of these materials. And, you know, later, actually, the Bill Bureau at uh, WashU 
actually could make a similar step using, I mean, the, you know, the similar to our synthetic process, they can make a wall structure like, I mean, the quantum belt, nano belt, and thickness again is uh, some, somewhere around like, I mean, the 0.5, 1.5, uh, no, no, 0.5 to the, 1.5 to 2 nanometer thickness. And uh, here, the dimension is a little bit longer and the micrometer scale. And also, you know, the later, I mean, the, he also like a pick up the, looking at the, using the, Epi fluorescent microscope, I and mean, actually he could see the single nano belt. Okay, as you can see in this, uh, in this, I mean, the, there is not that much variation by, I mean, the, each of these uh, quantum belt exhibit a very similar, uh, you know, the PL pattern. That means that this is, a, it's a uniform, and actually it's a quantum confined. That's what you see here. Okay. And the efficiency is he could crank up the efficiency to the quite high to 30%, okay? That's also kind of promising for the different kind of like a blue LED application and that kind of stuff, all right? And later I'm gonna mention this about too. So, so, so you know, the, we think what happened is the starting point. What's the starting point, okay? As uh, yesterday, Jonathan, you know, the Jonathan Owen gave a interesting talk about like, I mean, the nucleation and the growth process. That's quite interesting. And that's what interesting too. So this is what you think. Starting point is a CD SE13. This is what you think is monomer for this kind of like, I mean, the seed for the like a crystallization to make a nano belt structure. That, I'm going to back, get back to this later on. So, you know, the very recently, like a couple of years ago, Bill Bureau actually could uh, uh, see this kind of CDSC 13 clusters in the, in the world giant structure formation, during the world giant structure formation, all right? And then actually I, he could see that the larger clusters, uh, 33 and 34 clusters, but you know, he claimed that this is something, this is transformed to this, that's what he said, but you know, yeah. And also, you know, this kind of like, I mean, the clusters make a lamella structures, as you can see here. They're aggregated, assembled to make this kind of aggregate structures. And, you know, what, you know, the, what we think and a lot of people think is that basically, first, this CDSC clusters are assembled, and that uh, lightened to make this kind of like a two-dimensional, I mean, the plate-like structures, okay? And uh, also, I mean, the later, so this so far, the, the material is world giant structure. And uh, now actually, you know, the zinc plant structure of this kind of nanoplate was first, you know, the, I guess you are familiar with this guy, right? I mean, yeah. So, you know, the, yeah, Benoit did a wonderful job to make, uh, for the first time, the zinc plant nanoplate like a CDS structure was uh, generated by Benoit's group, you know, the, and actually it turned out to be Benoit is the major player in this area of, you know, 2D quantum structures. Uh, uh, areas of far surp surpassing me. You know, <laughs> you know he's, uh, he produced a Jillian's paper on this kind of interesting issue of making the uh, 2D quantum nanostructures. Okay, and then again, you know, the, the same thing. And he could also, I mean, the Benoit's group can also like uh, control the thickness, which is really big advancement. You know, we couldn't do it, actually. We just stuck at the 1.4 nanometer. And now he could, like, I mean, the, yeah, control the uh, thickness, as you shown here. And then again, it gives a very, it doesn't matter what type of zinc plant structures. As long as you get the thin, like, quantum structures, uh, not a plate, what you see is, you know, beautiful, like, a sharp PL, as you shown here. And also later, actually, in the jacks, and uh, actually he showed that uh, what is really go going on here. And as, as you sh shown here, I mean, he can continuously observe using the, this, I mean, the optical spectroscopy that uh, this is, uh, I mean, the continuously changing, like, I mean, the starting from here to plate and that kind of stuff. You know, the, this was what, what he elucidated in this uh, report in the Jacques paper in 2011. And uh, also, you know, later, I mean, Shagang Peng, and group actually after him moved back to uh, Zhejiang University. That's what he did as reported here. You know, basically what he said was this uh, surfactant as a, some kind of templating role and then uh, could make this kind of like, I mean, the zinc blend, you know, structures in a CDSC quantum uh, disk or ribbon structures like this, okay? And then they could actually, they show that as I mentioned, you know, the, this uh, surfactant can be used as a soft templating materials here. 
All right, and as I mentioned, just summary is that this is what I showing you earlier. Basically, I mean, the, one of the interesting part of this is uh, materials that it gives a very sharp, you know, PL as as uh, as I mentioned earlier, very sharp PLs in the in the blue regions, okay, and uh, and also like we can clearly see it in the absorption spectrum. We can clearly see that the differentiation sharp, like I mean, the splitting of the heavy hole and light hole. So bands, okay. We can clearly see that the, uh, you know, heavy or light hole, you know, the transitions here. Okay, that's another like you, you don't see this kind of sharp like a uh, well resolved, you know, the absorption spectra in the in in the normal like quantum structures. But here we could see it, and then and Benoit in collaboration with uh, Shasha actually did that uh, report in Nature material that uh, actually this is really 2D quantum electron structure is working here. So you know, the, by combining experimental, I mean the optical spectroscopic result and the calculations, actually they demonstrate that the, this is the QD quantum structure is actually working. And on top of that, actually they also measure the fluorescence lifetime and it turned out to be it's the nanoscale, nanosecond scale. Okay, it's very short and this is a, probably the fastest you know, quantum fluorescence lifetime ever reported. And uh, as you, this is what they reported in the Nature Materials a couple of years ago. And then, the, I mean, the very similar time, Talapin group and the Benoit group, you know, the, you know, Dimitri group, and uh, Dimitri Talapin group and the Benoit Rotret group, you know, the, made the core shell structures, okay? First, they make a CDSC. In this case, this is a Talapin paper, and they was published. They were, these two papers were published in back to back in JAX. Okay, and the first time in the, this is the CDSC is formed, and on top of the, on the surface, they also decorate the layer, like I mean the CDS, okay, the sulfide layer on the top of, to make a cold shell nanoplate structures. And that, that's, and also as I just mentioned, very similar materials also reported by, I mean the, you know, Benoit group. And uh, that's, so, as you can see, 85 and 91. So it's, it's this, these two papers were published back to back. All right. Co-shell structures. And also, I mean, we could uh, synthesize the CDSC, Wurzite CDSC nano belt, and uh, we reported uh, in a couple of years ago in the, in the small. And uh, actually, this is not as dramatic as a CDSC case, but still, we could see uh, splitting of this I mean, heavy or light or, you know, the train uh, subbands. Okay, we can see that over here, all right? And also we think, I mean, similar mechanism, starting from the nano, like, I mean, clusters. Clusters can transform to the, like, a nano plate or nano, you know, the nano belt-like structures, okay? And also CD telluride, we could make a similar, using similar process, we could also make a CD telluride nano plate structures, as is shown here, okay? And uh, they are stacked, and also sometimes we can actually luckily to get a separate single nano plate of the CD telluride. And uh, later, actually, the Horst Weller group actually reported the, the synthesis of, you know, the, now it's the PVS, that's sulfide in a nano sheet. And uh, as, as they, what they said is that uh, actually similar mechanism, oriented attachment of uh, spheres, okay, starting from spheres, that like, sphere of a cube like structures, which eventually stack together through oriented attachment to make a plate. That's what he reported in the science magazine. And also he, you know, his group actually tried to looking at the, some photoconductivity measurement, this one, and uh, not super duper, but still show that uh, some kind of possible potential applicability to the like photo, photo detectors for this, uh, using this uh, uh, CDS nanoplate material, okay? And also like, I mean, the more recently, this is bismuth telluride, you know, the nanoplate, we made it, and we actually look at the thermal electric property of this material and turn out to be not that super duper, but we got about 0.6, CT value of 0.6 using this kind of material. Okay, and uh, I mean, I'm sorry, David. I mean, the, tomorrow David's main topic gonna be you know, the doping, but let's say this is a small kind of like, I mean, the small bite, okay? of the doping, okay? So doping is obviously a very important issue. I mean, you're gonna hear extensive stories from David's talk tomorrow, okay? So you know, doping is quite important, right? And uh, there is many papers on doping of uh, zero-dimensional structures, okay? Such as like this, in the, the, obviously in the pioneer by uh, David Norris group, and the Pang, you know, 
Yeah. You know, the, this is not actually doping, but you know, the, it's uh, showing some kind of ligand effect, which is uh, giving the FET, uh, is uh, Dimitri and uh, you know, the Chris Murray did uh, this one. And so you know, the, again, doping is really important. We can, it, it can dramatically change the optical properties and electrical properties and obviously magnetic properties too. So it can change. Doping is a really critical issue. But you know, when it comes to nanoscale, okay, as uh, David, you know, and uh, Shasha, actually a long time ago, like I mean, not long, about like uh, 10 years ago, reported in a science magazine that uh, it's pretty challenging to make uh, doped systems. And also understanding what's going on in the doping processes is not easy. Even more tougher is that the uh, low dimensional quantum nanostructure doping is even more challenging. Okay, Com even compared to the spheres, this is uh, a lot more challenging. So that's what reported uh, few years ago in nature materials. As you can see that uh, the same material, as I mentioned earlier, to the, the 1.5 nanometer thick CDS in nano ribbon, we could put as much as 10% of manganese. Usually, even 1% is not easy to put in, okay, to adopt. Okay, that's very challenging. This was possible. First, I mean, the, let me just uh, show that the PL gives a, you know, like uh, from manganese photoluminescence, as you, you can clearly see that around like, I mean, the 580, something like that. And then we did the uh, EPR, I mean, the signature for the MN2 plus doping, and also the XF, XF clearly shows that this is a MN2 plus is successfully doped inside this uh, very thin CDS in normal ribbon structures, okay? And then we actually looking at the, we did the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Jack Fordina group at the, I mean, the Notre Dame University, we did a collaboration, and uh, he did a magnetic measurement. As you can see, we could see have a very high, like a Z factor of uh, 600. This is still a record in terms of like I mean, DMS, diluted magnetic semiconductor nanostructure. This is still a record, very high, like I'm um, Z effective. And also, external GMA splitting is uh, quite good. On top of that, because we can control the doping concentration. That means we can actually see, we can calculate this uh, SPD exchange coupling constant. We can actually get this information. And the, for the first time, we see that, uh, I mean, the theory, theorist, I mean, the theorist uh, projected that uh, by when you make uh, really small quantum resume structures, uh, structures, we might expect some kind of sign inversion of this uh, SP, uh, SD exchange constant. And that's exactly what you observe, because we could actually vary the concentration of manganese and observe and characterize the magnetic properties. That's what it reported here in the Nature Material a couple years ago. OK, and uh, later, I mean, the Gerd Bach group at, in Germany picked up our materials and then looking at more details like uh, magnetic structures, and then and then, as you can see, again, we can see that the distinct heavy hole and light hole regions can be clearly, bands can be clearly resolved here, okay? On top of that, and actually up to room temperature, okay, I think it's, there is a, this is the 4.5 Kelvin, and also like, I mean, the, again, we can actually, I mean, the extract information about the, I mean, the, not only heavy hole, but also, I mean, the light hole component can be clearly resolved here. And also, we could see that uh, we can actually separate out. Usually, what we put in nature materials is that the SP and D coupling, all right? <coughs> but here, we can actually resolve S and D and P and D exchange coupling constant, even at the room temperature, okay? Not just the, I mean, the low temperature, but we can, up to room temperature, you can resolve this kind of information, okay? And then, we, this is the one I showed in earlier. What's going on here? I'm recently, I'm really interested in the, like, uh, what's the starting point? Okay, how the nucleation occurs? You know, crystallization is important not only in nanocrystallization, crystallization, crystallization process is important in everywhere, even raining outside, corrosion, semiconductor fabrication, everything is a crystallization process, right? So understanding crystallization process is that, uh, really important. In particular, growth is, I mean, recently you see that uh, like a 
Paul's group, you know, did use uh, like I mean the liquid cell TEM, and uh, you know, to figure out the growth process. But still, challenging stage is nucleation. What's really going on from starting from molecular precursors? What's in between? Even the characterization of monomer is not easy. You know, hopefully I can show you in in paper soon, right? I think I have to wrap up, right? So you know the, yeah, just one one thing. This one, I, I just want, because you know, the after Munji is talking, and the, somebody asked a question that uh, what's going to happen for the CDSC, for the medical imaging application. Munji said, uh, you know, not easy, blah, 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 right? That's what he said. Yeah, that's why I worked on this. Okay, Munji, sorry. I'm sorry. But anyway, so, you know, the, as you know, so, you know the, this is the problem. You know, the problem is, I just want to talk one, one minute. Okay, one minute. Okay. So basically, you know, the Munji did a wonderful job. You know, the, using the type two, you know, the NIR absorbing quantum dot CDSC, you know, the CD telluride co-share structures to to do this kind of swine model, sentinel lymph node imaging. Right. This is wonderful work. And uh, but his collaborator, you know, John Flangeni in MGH, stopped working this because obviously on the toxicity issue. Right. That's why we, what we tackle here is uh, like a three photon imaging using manganese doped zinc sulfide nanocrystals. And we, it took like five years to make a bright enough, you know, you know, manganese doped zinc sulfide nanocrystals. And we did, instead of one photon, we did a one, two, three photon imaging for the first time in in vivo. So, you know, though, I will show you because of time limit. I just want to get why we want to have a three photon. By using a three photon, we can have a much higher penetration because we are using 920 nanometer light, NIR light. And also, resolution-wise, it should be a lot better, a lot better than the, like a single photon or even compared to two photon imaging. All right? That's what theory calculate, and that's exactly what's happening. And then we show that uh, this is a really three photon. And, uh, and then we did the cellular imaging, and we can see uh, up to 10 minutes, uh, 10 hours straight, straight fluorescence imaging. And resolution of cellular level resolution of uh, 270 nanometer can be reserved using this uh, three photon imaging probe. And furthermore, we did the uh, in vivo imaging. As you can see, we can see for the first time in vivo three photon imaging could be possible because using this kind of like a high, highly bright, you know, the quantum dot. And then we can see in deep inside and also can, we can have higher resolution. This is in vivo. You are looking at the blood vessel where thickness of the less than two micrometer can be resolved using this new uh, three photon imaging probe. Okay, with that also less toxicity, that's obvious. I think this is the most important slide and uh, I have to thank all of my students and uh, some of you, some of my students are here with me and then also collaborators, and also like a funding. And this is another slide. Good, good time for the advertisement, right? You know, I became director of the Korean MPI, okay? Like uh, two years ago, so you know, the, whoever have a challenging split, come to me, okay? From email, all right? So you know, the, I'm happy to consider for the postdoctoral fellow. With that, thank you very much, Kai, and attention. Thank you.